awesome. Hello and welcome to Kiev. And on this sunny Thursday afternoon, we can see the Russian armor that got into the center of Kiev. This is uh, St. Michael's Square. So it's in the center of the capital. And here we have some equipment put on display. This is equipment which got as far as the airport at Hostomel, which is to the northwest of uh, Kiev. And uh, from Hostomel, we've got towns such as uh, the next town is like Irpin or Vozel. Uh, sorry, Butcher or Vozel. Then we've got Irpin, and then we've got Kiev. Now I've done films from uh, Butcher and Irpin. First thing we've got here is a uh, Russian uh, T72. Now T72 has been on the go since 1970, but this is the um, T72 B33 uh, version, and uh, this was uh, not its original colour. It got a bit shut up. Now one of the problems with this vehicle is that it has what's called an auto loader. Uh, the auto loader fires the gun. Now I've been, I filmed a T72 from inside last year. Uh, well, I wasn't expecting the war to be done. I still got the film to actually uh, to go, but I did, did spend quite a lot of time filming inside it. And uh, so, um, the problem with the auto loader is well, the advantage is it makes the tank much smaller. If you compare this, for example, to something like Nabrams or something like that, then you'll see it's, this is much smaller. It's only three people in it. But the problem with an auto loader is that if it's hit from the above, boing, something like that, the ammunition is, is stored at the bottom of the turret and it's not protected. So effectively, what cooks this is its own ammunition. So bang, something comes in and blows the sets of its own. And that's why the turrets go flying off in, uh, um, when they hit from above. And you see that, uh, with, it's, in fact, it's, there's not many tanks which have been hit which has still got the turrets intact. And if the turret is intact, I think uh, that that means that um, it, w it didn't set the ammunition off effectively. I think that's the reason. I mean, somebody will probably write in and say that's a load of nonsense. Uh, but that's what I believe it to be. Now, let's have a, let's have a walk around. And uh, uh, so presumably that is the uniform. Here we've got a bit of more kit. Let's go to this. This is a BMD. Uh, this is an armored fighting vehicle. And uh, Butcher, I filmed a number of these in the same condition, um, which you might recognize. Now this is an, probably, it was air transported. It's meant to be air transportable and uh, this comes with uh, a detachable turret and it's considerable burnt out inside. Now there's quite a lot of these things lying around. I've got a bit of kit here as well, which the, um, the crew or possibly used or someone. The water bottle looks pretty old to me, but then again, when I was in the army, the, the, uh, the, the mess tins were from 1946. Well, then uh, that was, I was issued with them in 1979, so maybe that isn't <laughs> so bad. Got some more items of kit here. But one thing I do find rather curious though, are the boots, because the boots are far better quality than I was expecting. And uh, size, the size 44, you can see there, uh, BTK and GRUPP. There you go, that's who it's from. BTK Group. Mm -hmm. And BMD2 from the Airborne Combat um, uh, of 31st Guards Airborne Brigade of the Russian Federation. Destroyed as a result of an artillery strike on accumulation of military vehicles 
of the Russian forces at the Antonov airport near Hostomel. So it was at the very beginning of the aggression against Ukraine. Now, um, up here we've got this thing here, which is pretty large. This is a radio uh, communications equipment. I think it's a radio jamming. Let's, uh, let's come around and have a look at the sign. Because from a, from a distance, actually, I thought, I thought it was meant to be a bit of artillery and somebody stuck a cage on the top of it. Uh, there you go. SBR 2M Mercury BM Radio Explosives Jamming Station. Just a moment, check that. Yeah, okay. It's destroyed as a result of an artillery strike at, um, at uh, the airport. We don't see many of those things. Was that air transportable? I don't know. Uh, it might have been, but it's a bit big to me. That tank, though, there, which was destroyed in the area, I believe that that came down from Belarus. I believe. I, I could be wrong. But you can see the, the, this, this neo-Nazi V sign as well, uh, which, uh, on, so the, the V uh, tends to mean came from the north, the Z is those that came from the east. But unusual because V, Vostok, means east and Z uh, is west. But anyway, the, the Russians clearly don't know the east from the west. Or I don't know what the words mean. One of the two. There you are. BTR MD Amphibious Armoured uh, Personnel Carrier from the 31st Guards Airborne Brigade destroyed once more at the airport. And this has been well and truly destroyed. Now, um, I, I, I filmed a number of vehicles at the uh, in, in Butcher, you can see the video I uh, did from that, and they're all sort of lying there. Um, uh, it's a pile of, pile of ruins. Uh, what this... Uh, th these were hit by artillery, not by um, anti-tank weapons. And uh, so th this is sort of older. It's, it's, it's quote what it says. I mean, I don't know. I'm just repeating. <laughs> uh, Hey, let's have a look inside. And, uh, oh. oh. Is that coming in? Oh, it is coming out. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, I, quite honest, there's a lot more space in here than I would have expected. Uh, yeah, so for, from, the, from the room in here, I'm, I'm impressed. It's not not as good as a camper van, of course, but uh, that's that is that is quite impressive. But see how everything's burnt out again. Now this wouldn't have been carrying heavy ammunition, obviously. Soldiers inside would have had to have weapons, but uh, yeah, of a sorry, the wind's possibly. Hiding my voice. And so you've got this, again, this neo Nazi V sat symbol, uh, which is meant to, to identify them, but clearly the use of the V and the Z is symbolic of the swastika, which is what they represent. It's strange that they should pick letters like V and Z, which don't exist in the Cyrillic alphabet. So this, this to me is clearly uh, an indication of the imperialist and genocidal uh, ideology behind this invasion. Anyway, I'm going to take you back around here now to this uh, covered sign. Now, if you want to know anything about the history of the church or anything like that, unfortunately, you've come to the wrong place and oh here we are uh, i'll point this one out we're looking for ukrainian families to host foreign volunteers in exchange foreign volunteers will stand stand with this comrade comrades to protect your home each small ukrainian flag in the grass re represents a foreign foreign volunteer so got to speak english that's okay 
under 50 plus yeah well I'm under 50 plus yeah uh, <laughs> uh, depends how much more plus weapons experience yes gear helmet vest with plates no I haven't got any of that boots camo yeah I've got them anyway there you are see Nazar at the Medica border I know Nazar anyway alternatively you can contact me and I will tell you where to go as far as that's concerned yeah anyway so they want to get 195 people from all over the world to uh, defend uh, um, Ukraine and they're looking for Ukrainian families to um, host people if you know foreigners helping here in Ukraine we want to count them anonymously call okay right <laughs> Toda la gente viene aquí a apoyar. Everybody comes here to assist. And I'd like to point this one out finally here. Yeah. Blinken, we need body armor, Patriot systems, MiG jets, and the nuclear weapons and missiles taken from Ukraine. We civilians must defend every inch of Mariupol, Ukraine, Crimea, and Georgia. George is not in Ukraine, I must point out. We need everything to topple Moscow. Well, uh, <coughs> we turn our 1,700 nukes and thunder missiles now. If Ukraine hadn't given up its nuclear weapons, this wouldn't have happened. And I, from being a person who was highly critical of the campaign for nuclear disarmament when I was a student, I then, by the 90s, believed in nuclear disarmament. Well, unfortunately, I was proved wrong. And uh, it's clear that had Ukraine not given up its weapons, then this wouldn't have happened. Okay, right, so thanks very much for watching this video from, uh, from the center of Kyiv. And I hope you found that of interest. And all the best from me here. Thanks for watching.